Hi. Um, hi to everyone. Good morning. Um, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, it's early evening here. Uh, my name's Mike Halsey, um, and I'm the author of Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, I think, yeah, message is there. Right, so <clears throat> let's uh, talk about troubleshooting uh, Windows 7 here. So first of all, let me introduce myself to you so you know who I am. So I'm the author of Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out from Microsoft Press. Uh, I'm the author of the self-published Windows 7 Power Users Guide. And, and I'm a news editor on uh, websites including windows7news.com and ghacks.net. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Windows uh, MVP. And you can uh, find me here on my website. There's my Twitter handle. Uh, I'm on Facebook and on LinkedIn as well. So I'm easy to find and easy to easy to follow. And uh, events such as this uh, and other webcasts, uh, I always make sure that I that I have them up on my website on an events list as well. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about as you know, troubleshooting Windows 7. And I want to start with some of the easy ways and some of the simple ways that you can fix uh, problems in Windows 7. Now, many of you will already be familiar with some of these, but there may be people, um, may be people here today who, who aren't so familiar. So I'd like to cover some of the basics first. So we'll start with the automated troubleshooters in Windows 7. Now these are new. Um, these are new to Windows 7. You access them through the Action Center, which is the small arrow, uh, up arrow, uh, in the bottom right of your Windows 7 taskbar. And uh, there's uh, a quite an extensive selection of automated troubleshooters uh, here. Now, how they work is, as I say here, they all they do is they reset Windows components to their default. So let's say you're you're running a troubleshooter for your sound because your you can't get your your speakers or your microphone to work. All it will do is it will reset the the default settings for that particular um, device type. But an interesting thing, and this is especially useful in enterprise. If there's any of you who work in enterprises you can write your own troubleshooters if you're familiar with uh, extensible markup language. If you have the Windows 7 SDK uh, or, or download the Windows 7 SDK, there's a folder here. You can see the uh, bin um, TSP designer, uh, troubleshooting pack designer folder. There is a, uh, um, an SDK in there that allows you to write your own XML troubleshooters. Now these can be especially useful for, let's say you have bespoke software or you have bespoke hardware. Um, in well, let's say you have one particular type of printer throughout your company, throughout your business, and you can write a troubleshooter to automatically reset all of the um, parameters for that printer to the default. This means that users, that end users, can then run this troubleshooter themselves. It can greatly reduce the amount of uh, time and the amount of expense um, spent on on the, the support um, the support uh, lines. And um, there are a great uh, many many other benefits to this, especially particularly with bespoke um, with bespoke um, software as well. Uh, the arrow, I can see some people are asking, if you're running Windows 7, it's only in Windows 7, this, um, then it's down on the bottom right-hand bottom right -hand side of your Windows 7 taskbar, where you've got your clock and, uh, and your action arrow. Sorry, there's me saying it's the arrow. Uh, click on the white flag. Click on the, click on the flag, not the, uh, not the arrow. And, uh, and you can access the, um, the automatic troubleshooters uh, from there by clicking the white flag. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, System Restore. Now, System Restore 
um, you'll probably uh, already be familiar with. This has been around since Windows XP. It takes a snapshot of any files that change in uh, Windows when you perform an operation such as install a device driver or if you um, install a new piece of software or you install a Windows update. And it's uh, very useful for um, being able to roll back changes because even, even uh, Windows updates can cause your uh, computer to become unstable because when you think about it, Microsoft have got something like a billion computers to support. No two computers are, are the same. They're all going to be they're all going to be different, and uh, it's uh, an extremely useful feature. And there are several ways to access um, System Restore. I'll talk about another one um, in a little while, but the uh, main way to do it um, is to access it from the control panel or from Help which you've got directly on your start menu. So, as I said, you can also roll back uh, device uh, drivers here. So let's have a look at um, troubleshooting device, uh, device managers. So, uh, device drivers here. So when you're, when you're in the device manager, you can right-click on any device and you can do two things. To one of two things with it. You can either select properties for that device from the context menu that appears, or you can um, uninstall it. Now, if you select the properties for that device, then you can um, roll back the driver using uh, the system restore functionality. Now, this will only work if you've upgraded the, the driver for that hardware device. So you could go to roll back the driver and, and discover that there isn't one that you can roll back to because this is the first driver that you've got. So another way to do it, if you're having trouble with a device driver, is to uninstall it. But in previous versions of Windows, one of the biggest problems um, for uh, one of the biggest problems with uh, devices was that you uninstalled it, Windows kept a copy of that device driver on your hard disk and then when you went to reinstall it, it would reinstall the defective driver that you didn't want. And it was very difficult sometimes actually forcing Windows to install the correct driver. So now, with most, not all, but most device drivers in Windows, when you want to install it, you'll see, as you've got here, a little tick box to automatically delete that driver software from your hard drive. And uh, that can... Um, completely delete all of the files so that when you come to reinstall that that driver this defective driver won't necessarily be there. Another way to make sure that you can minimize troubleshooting problems is obviously to keep backups of your machine. I just want to talk about this um, briefly. Um, you can create a system image in every single edition of Windows 7 um, in by selecting backup and restore from the control panel or by typing backup into the search box in the uh, in the start menu and you'll see here on the screen here in the blue panel on the left hand side there's a link to create a system image there's also a link to create a system repair disk and I'll talk about those a little bit more um, shortly but did you know that in Windows 7 you can create a virtual machine of Windows 7 and you can boot from it. This means that you can actually add this virtual machine to your boot menu on your PC so that your regular copy installed in your hard drive of Windows 7 will appear there, but also the virtual machine will appear there as well. Now, the big advantage of this, especially in an enterprise environment, is that first of all, you can install the 64-bit version of Windows, which um, Microsoft Virtual PC doesn't support. That will only support 32-bit versions of Windows. But also, unlike um, running a, a, a copy of Windows 7 in a in virtual PC, this virtual machine, because you're actually booting from it, can take full advantage of all of the hardware resources in your computer. So it can see all of your hardware. It can 
take full advantage of your graphics card. You can do anything in it at all. You really would never notice the difference between uh, booting from a, uh, a regular copy of Windows 7 installed on your hard drive and booting from a copy of Windows 7 in this virtual machine. Now, this you need Windows 7 Enterprise or Ultimate in order to be able to take advantage of this, but it's a great feature and it's well documented as well on the Microsoft website. But I may do a uh, a, uh, a webcast on this in the near future because it's a very useful um, thing to know about. And of course, the rule: always keep regular backups of your files and data. Um, and uh, try and keep a, a backup off-site if you can. So now, one of the biggest problems with um, troubleshoot with causing problems with Windows is users, because there is nothing that a computer can do on its own to cause a problem, because a user has to be involved in some way with everything that goes wrong. Now, with Windows 7 Professional and above, you have a group policy editor, and you can use this to do all sorts of all sorts of things, such as, for instance, blocking access to USB flash drives and uh, other external media, uh, other external hard drives, and the like, um, to prevent people from being able to transfer malware or viruses onto your computer system. Um, lots of companies will also want to block access to these as well um, so that um, they can uh, uh, stop people from stealing corporate data. But there's, there's all sorts of useful features here. And one of, the, one of the best and one of the most useful, I think, is this ability to be able to block access to USB devices. And, uh, and that's in there. 